What's up everyone, Glenn Lentz here with my son Connor. We're gonna do something fun tonight. We're gonna take a look into the past at some of the most nostalgic things <laughs> of all time. Right now we're gonna look at holiday wish books. Like that was that was the common thing growing up. It's something it's a tradition that's you know it's gone down to him, his generation now. You know, on Christmas we'd always go over to grandma's house. Uh, get out the wish book, you know, like circle all the toys you wanted Santa Claus to bring you and shit. And I got two very special ones right here. Ones that are mainly, in, they have toys in them that mainly interest uh, my son and I. From two very, uh, very nostalgic, very awesome time periods as far as toys go. We got the first one up here is the 1989 Sears wish book. And then the second one we have up that we'll look at after that is the 1993 Sears Holiday Wish Book. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not proud to tell you what I paid for these, but um, they're collector's items now. If you can, if you can get a hold of them, I uh, paid about fifty-five dollars for the two of them. But <laughs> this is the last Christmas special that I'll be doing, so I figured it's you know let's 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 end it on something that I forgot to cover in all the other Christmas specials. Uh, something that was special to me growing up. I just like to look at like all the old shit, you know, the, t the time period. Yeah, I, I'm sure every kid in the '80s had like these fucking boots. Twenty-five dollars for those? Holy fuck! They weren't even that good looking. These books were so cool. Like, there's just so much nostalgic shit, and it's not just like Christmas, but it's like the style at the time. Like, I really miss seeing all this kind of shit. Like, uh, kids in school wearing this kind of stuff. Look at the clothing. The Ninja Turtles, man. Isn't that awesome? Like, oh, this, this is. Skate, Skate Brigade. This was the. This is pure '80s. Mario. Nintendo Power. Yeah, Mario is the big thing. You know, let's advertise Nintendo Power magazine on kids' clothing on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> that is such an awesome RoboCop sweatshirt. It's like the. What? Why not put it in black? Like it would look so much better on a black shirt, do you think? Yeah. Like that looks just like, like looks ugly pretty much. I was a fat kid too, so my parents would always like put me in a sweatshirt that was. Not very flattering to my physique back then. It was embarrassing. I mean, it's cool because it's RoboCop, but this is weird, isn't it? Yeah. Look at the Nintendo like nightgown this guy's wearing. He's only like a, he's only an NES. Uh. Ugh. Fucking strange. Ugh. <laughs> I guess the, the the clothing is just strange, Ugh. man. Uh, I guess uh, he was he was doing the transgender shit. Uh, way before it was popular now, I, I, I guess. Except Why the heck is that Mario Blue right there? Doing it with a Nintendo dress. A Blue Mario. Why is Blue Mario right there? Uh, I don't know. It's like they reversed the color or something. Uh-oh! Trump the video game. <laughs> Donald J. Trump is now president of... Even back in the 80s, Trump was triggering people. <laughs> oh, shit. Isn't that funny, a Trump video game? The day we're living in now and Donald Trump's president. Nobody thought at this time, when this fucking board game came out, there was Trump was going to be president. Our president had a board game at one point. <laughs> uh, going through here, we got all the Barbies. See, I remember this kind of shit from when, you know, my sister Aunt Jess was a kid. She had that. I you just, put Ninja Turtle ooze I put like Ninja Turtle ooze in it and shit and like <laughs> yeah the pool too she had I put like Ninja Turtle ooze in it and had my Ninja Turtles going in. Even the girls toys were kind of fun. They, like so, some of the shit. And it's like invaded the invading the girls toys with all the awesome boy toys, you know, like G.I. Joe's and Ninja Turtles. It's my little pony! So all the bronies out there, you brony kiddo. Yeah, look at that kind of, look at those high-tech racing games. Oh. <laughs> That's like, those are like high-tech racing games Even back the in the time. Even plug-and-plays It's hard to think, in this day and age, we can honestly say that plug-and-plays were something better than this shit right here. These, these were pretty garbage. I mean, like, they were, I'm assuming they were cheap. I, I got a few of these when I was a kid. Yeah, they're they're cheap. Even even from 1980 standards, fifteen dollars for that. It was like a cheap practical gift you get someone for Christmas or a birthday or something. Ancient tech. <laughs> well, one thing I wanted to point out: How the heck do you draw that on an etch sketch? 
That's physically impossible. Oh, uh, I think they're full of shit on that one. Like, you ever try drawing something on a fucking Etch-a-Sketch? Like, that's just bullshit. A house and a tree. Yeah. Oh, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of crazier shit in other catalogs. There's, like, masterpieces on a fucking Etch-A-Sketch. I mean, maybe there are hardcore Etch-A-Sketch enthusiasts out there that can draw, you know, insane masterpieces on a fucking Etch-A-Sketch. Whenever, I can only draw a rectangle on an Etch-A-Sketch. Like the fucking sleeping bags and shit? I, this really takes me back, like, the, the sleeping bag section of it. I didn't, I didn't need sleeping bags. We never went camping or anything. I mean, maybe you could use it as an extra blanket, but they're always, like, something you wanted, even, you know, because there's all your favorite characters are on these fucking sleeping bags and shit, so. And then, you like, I always thought this was cool, too, when I was a kid. There's no, really no reason to have a fucking tent. I mean, like, just, just for maybe play. Every kid wants a tent. You know, when they're a kid. I did. Uh, I think I had one. I don't, I think I had a real Ghostbuster one when I was a kid. I don't know if there's a real Ghostbuster one in here. Yo, there is! And I don't know if it was this one or not, but uh, it was one of them. You know, that. And I had this, the Ninja Turtle sleeping bag. And to be honest, I really don't know if I had the tent in the duffel bag. That's pretty cool, actually. I still like seeing that. <laughs> well, it's shit you, like, for kids to learn on. Number muncher. <laughs> See, like, you're so used to like the touchscreen phones and shit. Now, everything's so high-tech nowadays. Look at this shit we had back then. Like, to learn on. I think that thing was in E.T., the speak and spell. E.T., phone home and all that. Remember that? Spelling B. Spelling B. It's a good time for all. <laughs> Hello. Oh, man, this is just funny. This was, this was high tech back in the fucking 80s. This was always something strange, too. Like, even, I don't know if they do this yet or not in, like, newer Wish books or whatever. I'd have to go look at a new one. I haven't looked at a, a brand new one in, like, years. I don't really come up with it. I just thought it was kind of strange whenever you'd see uh, the Wish books carry, like, comic books and shit. Like, uh, the Marvel Comics value pack. Like, 13 bucks would get you a pack, a 25 comic book pack. Mom and Dad, I want a fucking dictionary for Christmas. What's a dictionary? <laughs> or a holy Bible. Uh, I guess if you're that religious or, you know, you're that uh, crazy about word definition and word usage... Do you want a dictionary for Christmas? No. Dictionary's okay. Oh. Yeah. We're getting the Connor section right here. Fucking Legos, man. Like, yeah. Uh, it was strange. Like, they're, the Legos they had back then is, like, it was pretty much nothing. It was it, it was what you had. We There wasn't, like, franchise or, or anything like that. It was just all, like, original Lego products. Got like some the, knights. Yeah, the Lego Knights, Spaceships. the Lego Space stuff, yeah, Lego City. Lego City, yeah. Uh, it was, like, now it's just, it's a never-ending array of Lego products. It's just fucking insane, like, the amount of, the reach Lego has now. Space Police. Dude, the Space Police were fucking great. Like, they were awesome. There's even Duplo, look. Oh, God, I hate Duplo. <laughs> yeah, Duplo even back then. Of course, you have your knockoff ones, too. Well, no, this page ain't knockoff. Those are actual Legos, but they're, like, uh... Those, space Adventure ones. This Tyco Space Adventure Super Blocks. <laughs> yeah, but these Legos over here, these are like, uh, like if you're a pro Lego builder, you know, like, yeah. Alright, I gotta see. This is the thing I want to find. It's for the best of the best Lego builders. Yes, I found it. There is an at at. There's a Lego set. Space of, uh, Super Blocks action building set. Space Adventure. It's an at at with a tail. At, at, tail. Because Tycho figured at ats would just be better with the tail. Maybe in the Empire Strikes Back they went to fell over when the snow speeders, you know, wrapped the tow cables around them. They gotta be like Brachiosaurus. But like this is the part of the uh, part of the Christmas catalog that I call the oddities. Like these are, I think maybe you'll feel the same way like when I explain it. But like these are the things that um. Uh, you thought were neat, and maybe it would be cool to get them for Christmas, but you didn't need to have them. Like, if Santa Claus forgot to bring it, or, you know, you didn't get it for Christmas, you weren't going to lose sleep over it, you know what I mean? But it'd be interesting just to see what they were and shit, you know what I mean? Like, you know, there's, a uh, there's, like, a pastel coloring set, and, like, these, like, little, like, er erector, <laughs> erector sets. I'm not laughing because of any dirty connotations. Get your mind out of the gutter, people. <laughs> or, or, like, this shit on this page. Like, you know, like, yeah, your, uh, the rock tumbler create beauty stones and stuff, or the, the pottery wheel. 
growing crystals. Like, it's just these... I call them oddities because they're just, like, odd toys. Yeah, I think it's they're almost... They're not toys. Well, they're, they're like crafts and stuff. And I, I think maybe they had a hard time trying to find a place for these things in these books. They try to group them all the same way, but they don't exactly all fit together. But, like, you're looking through them, you think they're kind of neat. You ask for them, knowing you might, or you may or may not get it, because there's toys you'd rather have. The pinball machines, these are like one of those like practical gifts you'd always like get for Christmas too, or like give to the people. Tiny ones. Yeah, the small like, the small pinball machines. It's like you know. I had a Spider-Man one. Let's see. Let's look at the the description for the Mario one. Take on Nintendo Pinball, tabletop electronic game complete with triple flipper. Control features, exciting sound effects, automatic digital scoring, and colorful Nintendo graphics. Three balls per game. <laughs> the legs have rubber tips to protect, say, table surfaces. And it looks like each description is pretty much the same thing. Uh, I guess. I was hoping the, I was hoping you'd get, like, more of a colorful description. Like, you know, defeat Bowser and the Koopas by, you know, engaging in this exciting game of pinball. But, oh, well. <laughs> okay. This is something I wanted to, to like look at because uh, franchises come out. It seems like odd things were always getting released for stuff that didn't quite fit. But you'd always get these in every like uh, Christmas wish book. Look at this. Ninja Turtle Shooting Gallery. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't that kind of go against... It was, like, uh, it was like when they released a bootleg gun, like a Ninja Turtle gun. They've never used a fucking gun on the show. Like... Maybe, maybe they have, like, on the Turtle Van or something. But it just seems so weird and out of character. Uh, Ninja Turtle Shooting Gallery. And it, if you look at the gun, it's it's like a 1911 pistol. <laughs> it's just strange, you know. I just wanted to look at that because I thought it was odd. Let's read the description of it once. It's the Ninja Turtles. Now they have their own arcade-style rapid-fire shooting gallery, and they dare you to take it on. Fully self-contained. They challenge us to take it on. So the Ninja Turtles are telling kids to shoot your enemies. Good message. <laughs> ah, now we're, we're reaching into the board games. Uh, the Trump board game was mentioned in the beginning of this, but it, I'm not seeing it anywhere in the, the board games. You want the Cookie Monster thing? Cookie Monster Popper. Throw cookies into the jar until it pops back out. <laughs> uh... Let's look at some of the other interesting board games here. Hot Potato. Toss the potato until the music stops. Who will get caught? I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing one that we had as kids. Kerplunk. Kerplunk was a pretty popular board game type thing. We played it at Grandma's, you remember that? Pull out the sticks, but don't lose your marbles. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Won't, don't wake the dragon. Thirteen. Don't wake the dragon. Retrieve stolen eggs from the sleeping dragon, and then I think that's it. I wonder how that game works. It's like, break, don't break the ice or something. Something similar. 15, Nickelodeon. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is like the beginning of Nickelodeon around this time, 1988-89. Um, finders Keepers. It's Hiders versus Finders from Nickelodeon. That's got to be the worst description of a board game. It doesn't... It doesn't say anything. <laughs> and of course, there's just some of the more popular ones like Shark Attack. Crossfire. 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 Uh, Nickelodeon's Double Dare, Mousetrap. Spider Wars. Spider Wars. It's like, well, everyone knows what the, the games we just mentioned, yeah, everyone already knows about. Like, what's the description for Spider Wars? Dizzy Dizzy Dinosaur. Spider Wars. Outwit an opponent's spiders for two players. Uh, it's like they didn't understand. It's like if they didn't understand what the game was, they just weren't gonna give a shit on writing a description. <laughs> you know, it's so vague. Dizzy, dizzy dinosaur. Dizzy, dizzy dinosaur. Escape to your cave and elude this zany dinosaur. Dude, that I'm just gonna say that board game looks like complete shit. Like there's nothing. On it. There's a like a crappy looking wind up dinosaur in the middle of the board. That's gotta be the cheapest, shittiest board game. How much do they want for it? In 1989, $11.35. And it's probably not even worth five. But here's here's the more adult-themed uh, board games. Now, I, I'm still trying to find the Trump game. Oh, there it is right there. What's the description? For three to four players ages 12 years and up, weight three pounds, 11 ounces. 
Is that all, is that how much Trump weighs or <laughs> that's a pretty shitty description. Like oh they don't give any descriptions. Look at this. Merlin magic. Yeah, a uh, magic board game type thing. They're not, they're not really board games, but what the fuck is a Trump game? Like, do you just go buy shit, try to be president, talk shit to people like news anchors and stuff? Like, if that was the board game, then I'd want it. <laughs> oh boy, now we're really getting into the fucking the shit bowl here. Tiger games. <laughs> I, I just want to read the descriptions in some of these fuckers. As shitty as these things were. I have to say they do bring back memories, because I've I had some of these. Uh, they had a I, they had a Contra one. The ones this that the Contra one, they had a Ninja Turtles one that I had. I got for Christmas one year. I actually played it. It was fun for being a piece of shit. Eleven Contra the Tiger game. <laughs> the galaxy's fiercest foe in the hot game Contra. The Earth depends on you. Destroy Red Falcon. I guess it's not the worst description I've ever heard. Double Dragon. Let's look at that one. Where is that one? Fourteen. Sketch the, search the five worlds for magic codes in the popular fantasy game Gauntlet. Uses two AA batteries. Well, I just read the thing for Gauntlet, not Double Dragon. I, oh, hang on here a second. Gauntlet. Let me reread that. Search the five worlds for magic codes in the popular fantasy game Gauntlet. Um, I've played a lot of Gauntlet growing up. Uh... I wouldn't really describe Gauntlet as going and finding secret codes. Sure, sure, it's a puzzle game, but you're just trying to find keys so you can get past certain obstacles and try to get as much health to stop the timer from going down because that pretty much is your health. I don't know, that's a really shitty description. I don't even think they knew what the game was about. I'm pretty sure the Tiger game is supposed to follow uh, what the actual game was. 13 Double Dragon. Jump, kick, or punch your way through four missions and three lives and double dragon. I guess. It's not a very exciting description, but... 15. Castlevania II is Simon's Quest. Find, find the crystal ball to complete your mission and end the terror of Count Dracula's curse. Simon's Quest uses two AA batteries. For one or two players. I'm sorry, but I, if you... I, I always read that too when I was a kid that these things are capable of two players. Like that that's the shittiest thing to try to have a two Damn. player game on. I just read it to myself for the Top Gun one. <laughs> Top Gun. It's you against them, as your fighter screams into the danger zone. <laughs> I think you know why I paused, I'm gonna be adding that song into this fucking video. <laughs> are you the top gun? It requires two A batteries. One or two players. Yeah, another game I would not want to fucking play two players on. Okay, now we're getting the, we're getting into the fucking awesome section. One of the best parts of the 1980s, the NES and Nintendo related products. And it, I just love looking back at this because it, it's it's cool to see what all this shit uh, was valued at back then. What you could get a new system for but the Nintendo Game Boy, which is actually one of my favorite consoles of all time. I still play the original Game Boy my friend Carl found for me. $89.47 for a handheld unit. Uh, nowadays, whenever like a DS comes out, it's usually like, what, 200 bucks? Like, they're really fucking expensive. The next generation of Nintendo, introducing the Game Boy in 1989. I just want to read the description. Wow! <laughs> Nintendo action in a handheld system. Game Boy has... A dot matrix screen plus standard controls you'll recognize. It is capable of playing many games using interchangeable cartridges. It includes Tetris game. Other games sold separately below. It requires four AA alkaline batteries that won't last past a couple hours of gameplay. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty accurate description of the Game Boy, I guess. Man, that's so awesome. Like, I, I just love seeing that fucking yellow screen. Even though it looked like shit, it was still valued highly. What is that? That is an entertainment center where you can store all your games and shit. Look at this. The action set for the NES. Look at what you get for $150. It says it's the best way yet to play with power. So you get $149.99, gets you two controllers. I'm assuming you get the power pad because it's sitting there, obviously. You get the zapper. That's when the zapper was fucking uh, gray yet, too, before the whole... Uh, Thing where they had to change it to orange because it looked too much like a real gun or something. Um, fun and fitness. Jump onto the innovative power pad and you can actually control on-screen action with your body movements. In a kind of shitty manner if you're playing uh, track and field. 
<laughs> Let's look at some of the other shit. There's some stuff I want to talk about too, cause um, yeah, number two, the fucking NES Advantage, still one of my favorite controllers of all time. Ultimate Control, NES Advantage joystick gives you slow motion and rapid fire for super precise action control. I almost feel like Nintendo wrote these descriptions, like Sears didn't, cause Sears kind of sucks at writing descriptions. It seems like. Oh, number three, that one was the biggest shit biscuit out of any controller. <laughs> The fucking Activision remote controller. Small and easy to use. This wireless infrared controller lets you really get into the That's game. Not Activision. It's a claim. Acclaim. Yeah, the Acclaim remote controller. I had this thing. It was one of the biggest piles of shit ever. It, it has a very short range. You can't get in the way of the sensor. It won't fucking work. It, it sucks. It's garbage. I can't believe they even were allowed to sell it. And over here, here's the, the basic NES. For $99.99, you got, you know, your basic. Nintendo Entertainment System with the light gun zapper of the Super Mario Duck Hunt and a controller. Yeah, Mario's blue in that one, too. That's just really weird. Like, why would they use that? That's from Mario Brothers 2, by the way. Of course, you had all this other shit. All the other accessories. Look, the U-Force is in there. How much did this fucking thing cost back then? Bad, Eight. dude. The U-Force was $80 back in 1989. It's probably valued a lot more nowadays. Fucking number four, the NES Max controller. That was actually a pretty good controller. That's one that I actually have to buy yet. The rock and roller. That, that was a big piece of shit that didn't work. Right, let's look at the video games. <laughs> Airwolf. That's bad dude. Bad. Wasn't it bad dudes? Yeah. It's supposed to be bad dudes, not bad dude. Bases loaded baseball. Blaster master. Blades of steel. Bayou Billy, Bionic Commando, Bugs Bunny, Crazy Castle, California games. Each one of these were on average about $35 to $40 back in 1989. Some of them are worth it. Some of them are not worth fucking anything, and I can't believe they sold them for that price. Defender of the Crown, I don't think I've ever played that. Dr. Chaos, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. $40. Oh, man. Imagine how many kids woke up on Christmas morning and got that game and just were completely fucking disappointed in it. <laughs> DuckTales, that one was worth $40, $41, I'd say. Dragon Warrior, $40. I paid 40 bucks for Dragon Warrior. Even though my copy I paid a dollar for, so I'm happy with that. Excite Bike, Fasanadu. Look at that Mario. Yeah, that, that's like a weird Mario. I don't know what that is. And I like the picture of Tetris. <laughs> the fucking picture of Tetris, like, it's not, what is that? It's a great background that just says Tetris. <laughs> That's not getting me pumped to want this game, like, if I saw that picture as a kid looking through this, my first thought was like, wow, Santa's gotta bring me this fucking game. It's fucking Tetris, man. Look at that green screen with the words Tetris on it. I don't think Sears sold many copies of Tetris this Christmas. That Christmas, anyway, of 89. Karate Kid, that's... That's not Karate Kid, that's like something strange. That's not the same game, though. Monst Monster Party Games. I wish that came out to the Karate Kid, though. Monster... It's called Monster Party. Why would you call it Monster Party Games? That's worth 40 bucks. I like that game. Mega Man 2, 41.77. That's a great game. Robo Warrior, Shooting Range, Simon's Quest, thirty-seven ninety-seven. Skater Die, Adventures of Tom Sawyer, which was a really fucking hard game. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, thirty-nine eighty-nine, and it wasn't that great of a game. Hogan's Alley, hoops. Meg Max, thirty-nine seventy-seven. That's a fun game. Marble Madness, Major League Baseball, RC Pro Am. That's a really fun game. Operation Wolf, the game that's guaranteed to kill your fucking trigger finger. Ninja Gaiden, 43, 47. Street Cop is, isn't even the game, it's the cover art. Yeah, that's not pixelated. Street Cop is just like the cover art. They're not doing a very good game uh, job uh, advertising these games and getting people to want them. Pebble Beach Goal is just an island. <laughs> that is not Super Mario Bros. 2. That's too. like stretched out. That's Super Mario Bros. 2, that's the original. No, that's the first one. They completely fucked that up, because that was, like, I think 89 was the year when that game came out, 88 or, 88 or 89. It's not the same style either, see? World 1-1. One one. 
Yeah, because they released that 2020 episode on Nuts for Nintendo, too. I remember that. We don't know how to free Zelda, but we do know why kids love them and critics hate them. John Stossel reports, Nuts for Nintendo, when 2020 continues. And it, wow, they, yeah, they fucked that up. That's the first Mario Brothers, unless they couldn't get a screenshot of it, and they're just like, well, fuck it, it's the same game anyway, who cares? Kids ain't gonna know the difference. World something is... Sorry, not, not available! Yeah, World something is not available, and they're very sorry. But you can get Wheel of Fortune, or WrestleMania, or Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. <laughs> nah, the Sega Genesis. Well, that's yeah. fucking cool. Genesis, the future is now. Get ready. Sega is shooting video thrill seekers into a stunning new dimension of breathtaking video power and graphic sophistication. It's the magic of true 16-bit technology, up to now found only in arcades and computers. It's available at home for the first time ever in the Genesis Home Video System. You've never seen more brilliant colors, more spine-tingling action exploding on your screen. Experience it and your world will never be the same. That's a hell of a description. Genesis with 16-bit technology lets you play games that look, play, and sound exactly like the arcade. I beg to differ on that one. I love the fucking Sega Genesis, but it's not exactly like the arcade. <laughs> Where's Sonic? I don't see Sonic. Sonic wasn't packaged with this yet. Sonic wasn't really? around until like 90 or 91, I think. Somewhere around there. Yeah, this is before that. That's when uh, Altered Beast was the, the pack-in game for it. See, they even got the description right here on the side. Because, you know, of course it's the packing game. You're the Centurion Warrior called Fourth. Okay. To save Zeus's daughter, ma master each fantastic challenge you face, and you'll transform from mere man... The fierce and powerful characters finally emerging as the greatest altered beast, the Golden Werewolf. That is a fun game, though. I really do like Altered Beast. Like, it, as simplistic and shit as it is. A lot of these games are really cool, too. Uh, I never played Super Thunder Blade, but... Space Harrier 2 I kind of liked. I played that. Thunder Force 2. World Soccer looks stupid. <laughs> Ghouls and Ghosts! Now, well, that's a fucking classic right there. Last Battle looks like some shitty fighting game. I want to read this. Take out menacing creatures from your worst nightmares, but watch out for the deadly... Sorcerer. Sorcerer. <laughs> That's not a good description at all. Yeah, this, this was like the beginning of Sega putting out, like, bases to put on your fucking console. The Power Base Converter lets you play all your Sega Base Master and Sega Scope 3D games. And on the Genesis system, that's almost 100 games in all. It's $35. It's better than what the fucking 32X was what when it came out. What is Last Battle? It's a martial arts skills and strategy come together as you go up against the evil trio of Garrick, Grom, and Gross. In other words, it's probably a shitty fighting game. <laughs> well, they still had the Master System for sale in here if you didn't, uh, if you didn't have enough money to buy the Genesis. This one was a hundred bucks too to compete with the NES. Uh, the complete Master System includes a high memory capacity power base for arcade quality effects. Two high-speed controllers, Light Phaser, which even registers hits and misses, and Hang On Safari Hunt game cartridge. So yeah, it was pretty much Sega's version of the NES, but it just didn't catch on as good. Uh, so a lot of these games I've never played because I never had a Master System. But... Time Soldiers! Time Soldiers. Lord of the Sword. Spy vs. Spy. Elf! The Sega Master System. Why isn't it all caps? Uh, Elf. Outrun was fun. I never saw game. this screenshot in the game. Rambo 3. I think I played the Genesis one, but not that one. It probably sucks. <laughs> Altered Beast. Like, most of the most of the Genesis ports uh, for these games that made it on the Master System after the fact really sucked. Like, they did Sonic, and it was terrible. Rampage. I'm assuming that would probably be good, because it was good on the NES. Oh, uh, let's see. Ghostbusters! That's a hell of a one. I've never played that, but for the one for NES was terrible. From the hit movie, scare up some fun, capturing weird ghosts, <laughs> eluding the Marshmallow Man, and defeating the all-powerful Gorza. Go Gorza. It's supposed to be Gozer. I guess they didn't watch the movie when they wrote the description. Bomber Raid. Rastan! That was a fun game. I like that one. Afterburner, Shinobi. There's R Type. Wonder Boy and Monster Land. Twelve rounds of action. 
12 rounds of action of what? You'd probably have to look at the fucking screen cap there. There's a little knight and it looks like uh, like little teardrop things with bows on their heads. 12 rounds of what? <laughs> oh, God. I didn't think we'd see this. Uh, well, actually, yeah. It's the Atari... Which one is this? The 7800, which is a huge piece of shit. The joysticks are or is it like always prone to breaking. Look at that! Ah! No, it's 78... No, I think it was a 5200. That was the piece of shit. I think the 7800 was the one where they were trying to fix it. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not that great with my Atari history or anything. 60 bucks! That's not bad for a console back then. I'm assuming they were trying to compete with the NES. But it didn't work. The games don't look terrible. Donkey Kong? Yeah, Donkey That's Kong. That's a screen cap from the Nintendo! Well, it had it, it must have been on the seventy eight hundred because remember for a period of time they were allowed to have Donkey Kong on yeah. certain Atari systems. Double Dragon was on. Dig that. Dug. Yeah, Dig Dug's fun. Yeah, well, of course on an Atari system you're always gonna have all the classic arcade games. Super Huey, <laughs> cracked. I wonder, I wonder if that's like cracked Com magazine, you know? Mario Brothers. Yeah, some of the Mario and Nintendo titles were actually available on. Uh, Atari for a while. I actually kind of want to get a 7800. On oh, the Atari XE, which is a system I don't think ever caught on. It's got all your same basic shit, like gun cartridges. I actually never heard of the Atari XE. Oh, uh, I never did either. You can still look. You can still get the 2600. Look, there was a time the the revamp model of the 2600 was 40 bucks. You could still get it. This is when Atari was on their way out, though. Like they just couldn't compete with like Sega and Nintendo anymore. But I mean, the, the XE doesn't look bad, but doesn't the design of it look like shit? Like yeah. It, it just looks like, like I don't know, like a, a toy or something. There's like a keyboard on it and shit. It's just weird. I'm assuming it was supposed to double as like a family computer or something. And there's some of the games on there. They had Mario Brothers, <laughs> Fight Night, Crystal Castle, Centipede. Nothing too exciting, I guess. Right, now we're getting into the really fun area. The, the, the area that brings back the most memories for me, and I know Connor will like looking at this too. It's all the fucking, the old toys from 1989, like in this page, it's Ninja Turtles. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. This is when all this shit was new. But like, new Ninja Turtles toys, I noticed they didn't change them much, like you have the blimp, it didn't, the design of it didn't change, it kind of kept all similar. Only the plastic feels cheaper. Ninja Turtle blimp, inflatable, 30 inches. I almost feel like I'm reading the description of a sex toy when I read this. <laughs> Turtleized armor printing and loops for hanging. Features a detachable glider with a turtle bomb launcher. Two torpedoes and four bombs. Accurate, I guess. Dude, I had that as a kid. I loved that thing. I used to shoot those at mom's cat <laughs> when I was a kid to, to launch pizzas at a pretty, pretty good, uh, you know, footage per second. Battery-operated launch, lunch launcher has motorized disc player action for singular continuous delivery. Holds 20 pizza discs. Adjustable shooting angle. You have plenty of fun with animals in this thing. And they had the other stuff too, like the turtle van. The turtle party wagon, urban assault and, and transport vehicle. Shell top VW van converts to a battery ready machine with spring loaded side door tenderi tenderizer. Tenderizer? I guess. <laughs> that smashes foot, holds turtle, drops two bombs. Ba battery ready. Battery ready? You know what I mean? Battle ready? Like, what the fuck? Yes. It's seven. Genghis Frog Cheapskate. Bad Guy Turtle. The <laughs> Bad Guy Turtle Set. A hell of a name for the set. Krang Rocksteady Baxter Stockman. Excess. Excess? What the fuck? The Go Real on, Ghostbusters! Now, this is one of my favorite fucking things in this whole book. This is why I wanted this book so I can look back at all the awesome Ghostbusters shit. Let's get, like, Ghostbusters is still like... Uh, I still think about Ghostbusters every Christmas when I look at this. Um, number one, like, I had that too, I don't know what happened to it. The Ecto Popper and the goggles. Spot the evil spirits while you fire soft foam pellets up to six feet with the Ecto goggles and Ecto Popper. Comes with four soft pellets. <laughs> number two, we, I had this too, I don't know what happened to it. I had a lot of this shit. Zap any ghost that tries to scare you with the Neutrona Blaster. Just twist the handle and the Proton Beam will blast those ghosts. They had a lot, Kenner had a lot of cool shit back then. You never kind of see this shit from the Mattel for the Ghostbusters stuff now. 
three, the ghost trap. In the ghost trap, you control the doors, your hands, or feet. Doors and ghosts glow in the dark. Look for belt attachment and accessory ghost included. So that little ghost is supposed to go in that trap. <laughs> of course, yeah, every kid had to have that. And I, I did have it, too. Rid your home of menacing ghosts with Proton Pack. Pack includes backpack with straps, ghost blaster with soft, soft foam wad. Wad. Wand. That sounded bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> Power cord, PKE meter with rotating antenna, manually turning knob with clicking sound. Also includes Ghostbuster armband, label sheet, and a Ghostbusters ID card. Fuck yeah. <laughs> of course, you had all your figures. I think I had most of these too. Peter, Egon, right? All the ones that had these like cool different suits that were in the show. Of course, there's the Ecto-1 right there. Captured Ghost in the Ecto-1 Ambulance. Features opening doors and rear hatch with cargo area plus a winch and claw. Includes one ghost. You, I, you have that. Yeah. I had that as a kid too. I love that toy. Search for Ghost in Highway Haunter. Car changes to monster when seat headrest is pressed. Front seat holds two figures, not included. Of course they're not going to be included. What do you think this is? You think you need to get a fucking figure with your toy vehicle? Go fuck yourself, kids. Oh, of course you got He-Man. Well, you got the RoboCop figures, too. Oh, that's fucking cool. Yeah, I had some of those, too. The RoboCop figures. Yeah, those bring back a lot of memories. Kenner always had to put their own twist on shit. You got the He-Man figures right here. These are from, like, the crappy He-Man show. Remember from that time? Yeah. When he had, like, the blue spandex pants and stuff. Yeah, it's nothing special there. Yeah, of course, in this page you got all the Hot Wheels. I remember having some of this stuff. Hot Wheels are always fucking cool. I still collect Hot Wheels to this day, actually. <laughs> and once you're done looking at all the toys and video games, you come to the real prize jewel of these books. Guns and gun cabinets and shit. This is back when it was acceptable to show this kind of shit alongside, like, toys and video games and all that kid-friendly kind of stuff. It was a holiday wish book. Back then, people weren't as offended by shit or set off by shit. So, like, this was all okay. I still think it's okay. I don't see any problem with this. You know, if you don't like it, tough shit. Like, another reason I like looking through these books, too, is, like, there's things in here that, like, the styles of certain things that are just never going to come again. Like, uh, wood televisions. Like, you, you never see any flat-screen TVs nowadays, like, high-def televisions with, like, wood trim on them and shit. Like, even the microwaves that, like, wood trim on them and shit, you know, like, just, like, all this crazy shit. All this shit, when you look at it, it just screams 80s. If you didn't know this was an 80s catalog, all you'd have to do is just look at a lot of this shit, and it, you could just tell it was from the fucking 80s. None of this stuff is from, you know, this era, because there's very some something very distinct about the 1980s and wood trim on shit. <laughs> these these were top of the line computers back then. The Commodore Amiga, six hundred bucks. It can even project. Audio. Look at everything it can do. <laughs> I can't believe what some of the sound systems costed back then. I mean, like this was like the dawn of CDs. Like CDs were like an unheard of thing back in 1989. They just started them. They weren't common. They didn't come like insanely common and mainstream until uh, like the 90s, pretty much. But like, look at some of these like boom boxes and shit. There's one here. For six, almost six hundred dollars, but it's okay because there's no payments until next year on any order of a hundred dollars or more placed by October thirty first. So at least we got that going for us. Uh, VHS tapes. <laughs> How much were VHS tapes back then? On average, twenty to thirty fucking dollars for a VHS tape. It's Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah. Well, that one's cheap. That one's fifteen. <laughs> VCRs. Bring home the movies. How much did these fucking things cost back in 1989? Holy shit! If you wanted to bring the movie home, you were going to fucking pay for it, man. Look at that. A brand new VCR, $370. Jeez. Did you ever think you'd see a time in history when a game system costed more than, like, a CD or a DVD player? That's what's crazy. But, like, this... When I'm, like, reverse thinking now, now, now this seems fucking crazy to me. A fucking VCR for 370 bucks. Holy shit, that one's 400 Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Like, even camcorders, like, what they costed back then. Like, you, you can get a camera from the store, almost anyone, and still take good quality uh, video and pictures with it. But, like, these things, like, look how much these costed for, like, tape camcorders. Like, a thousand bucks, some of them. 
Insanity, man. Pure fucking insanity. We just looked at the 89 catalog, and now we're going to look at, at the 93 catalog. It's cool looking through these, though. Yeah, let's look at the 1993 Christmas catalog ones and see what's in this bitch. Uh, a lot of this shit we already looked at in the 1989 catalog, which is um, you know, like wooden TVs and shit like that from that that era or whatever. And I, now we're going to look at a lot of this stuff in here. Oh, it's Barney. Uh. You want to look at the Barney shit? Uh. <laughs> Barney was a huge thing back then, man. Everyone had all the ki Everyone had all the toys and shit. Not me, though, because I was cool. I was in all the awesome boy toys. Oh, I was going to, like, this page. There's there's always some, like, uh, I'd always come across some of this weird shit that I usually like. But, I, I dude, I really wanted that Ninja Turtles aquarium. I always thought that thing was cool. There's, like, there's even a turtle in it. <laughs> Clever girl. Clever girl. The dog with the dog treats. How the heck is it doing that? That's it's like a little bone that turns down the dog no. can press and how is that fake? That has to be fake. The dog can do that. The dog can do that because it's it's a lever for the dog to press down. But you know, the, you know what I'm saying? Because the dog can go up there and press it down, and a treat comes out. But how is the dog that smart? Well, the dog would have to learn. Is it bred with raptor DNA? Then it was bred with raptor DNA. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. This is what every kid wants from Santa Claus under the tree. Fucking Batman toothbrush. You gotta worry about your dental hygiene this holiday season. Like, just, just like comprehend that. Like, why they? Why would you even put this in a Christmas catalog? Like, you know, well, that you can't even like do anything with him. He's he's permanently affixed to the toothbrush set. It's just like yeah, like you, you open up all your toys and you're gonna get something cool. It's a fucking Batman toothbrush set. Like, Merry Christmas, kids. Take care of your rotting teeth. Oh, the the dinosaur blocks. Yeah. See those when you were a kid? Oh, I don't remember these when I was a kid. The dinosaur building blocks. I wonder if it comes at that table or whatever. I want the dinosaurs. Dino blocks, Tyrannosaurus Rex is an awesome 740 piece set that includes a platform to help you recreate prehistoric terrain. You can build other dinosaurs too. Like what? Other dinosaurs, I, I'm assuming. Triceratops, whatever. We're getting it back into more Legos and other construction sets. There wasn't many in this Christmas catalog for Lego sets. It's, well, I guess they didn't have many sets available that you know back then either. Where you got the the Ice Planet, you got the fucking uh, what is that? Dragons and knights and shit. Lego City, pirates. It wasn't a wide variety of Lego sets. I want the pirates. Don't you want a Big Daddy Erector set? No, I want the <laughs> I want the pirates. If you were suffering from ED, you might want to get an Erector set for Christmas. Uh, this is something I wanted to talk about. For some reason, when I think about Christmas, I always think about this house we had, like Grandma Kathy had uh, when we were growing up. It was just some big cardboard house. Uh, I never understood why I, I, I liked that thing so much, but th that's actually the house that she had that us kids colored and stuff. At least I think it is. But it, like as soon as I saw that, it kind of triggered my, my memory from when I was you know, like five years old when they had that. And you of course colored it's, it? I think we did. You know, of course, it was cardboard, so it just got thrown away anyway. It's still kind of kind of cool to see that. Hey, see that I don't understand. It right here is another cardboard house. It's a cardboard ladder. Like why why even include that? Because you know there's gonna be like some kid that's gonna try to climb up that and just ruin it. Then the other kid's gonna cry over it. Walkie talkies. You got your Jurassic Park walkie talkies. It just says dinosaur on it and a Jurassic Park symbol. Dinosaur Jurassic Park. Well, I mean they they look legit enough. Like something you'd see in the movie. The Sonic ones, I don't under, really understand that. What but, is the point of that? Yeah, I don't know. Is that how Sonic calls Taylor? I need Sonic walkie-talkies for Christmas. We we're getting into the video games, what was popular back then. The Super Nintendo era. Let's see how much was the Super Nintendo back then. $139.99. Super Nintendo Entertainment System complete system with 16-bit technology, advanced graphics, and stereo sound. Includes control deck, two controllers, Super Mario World game pack, stereo AV cable, AC adapter, and manufacturer's bonus coupon for Super Mario All-Stars. I guess that's not bad. Then you got the, the uh, Super Scope. Cordless firing device allows you to play Super NES with pinpoint accuracy from anywhere in the room. That is a total lie. That thing works like shit. Super Scope. Yeah. <laughs> that's freaking impossible! You got Mario Paint right How? there. Somebody just slapped that image on me. I know they did. 
No, you gotta go to you gotta go to Mario Paint College to be able to do bitmap art like that. See, look at the video games that are available. You got Super Mario All Stars. That was a great cartridge. Mario is missing. It's a piece of shit. Fifty eight dollars for that fucking game. It's like not even a game. It's like some half assed uh, educational game. Yoshi Safari. You use that with the super scope. There's no descriptions for any of these games in this magazine. I guess it's just, you know, whatever it is. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, $75. NFL! Ugh, oh, $57.99 for NFL. It's not even worth, like, $2 nowadays. Super Mario Kart. Yeah, that, that was, that's when Mario Kart was, you know, it looked like shit, but we all we all loved it, even though it looked like shit. And what else? Royal Rumble and Home Alone 2. That... that, that that screenshot for Home Alone 2 just looks like shit. It's just a building. They covered up Kevin on the screenshot. So it's like you don't even know what the hell the that is. Tasmania. Tasmania. Of course, they still had the NES in here. How much was the NES? He had ninety dollars. They still wanted ninety bucks and ninety three for the NES, even though the Super NES was out. Control deck, two controllers, and Super Mario Brothers three game pack. That's, that's a fucking. That's still my favorite game of all time. Is Mario three. Thomas, the tank engine! Fifth, forty-eight dollars for that fucking game. That game sucks. How do you know? Because I played it already on an emulator. <laughs> you got Super Mario Brothers 2, 40 bucks. It's well worth it. Why is, why is Thomas more than Mario 2 in this book? That's fucking ridiculous. Crash Dummies, that game sucks. Yoshi's Cookie wasn't a fan. Kirby, that's a good game. Legend of Zelda is thirty dollars. Punch out. Of course, Mike Tyson wasn't on on that one. The Co Tiny Toon Adventures Cartoon Workshop. That was pretty cool. How much was the Game Boy yet? Oh, the Game Boy was still like eighty dollars. This was like years later. That was released way back in like eighty five. I think the Game Boy. That's crazy. You got your twenty dollars selection. The Terminator. That game sucks. Wheel of Fortune. That's okay. Tailspin was all right. James Bond Jr. That game sucks. <laughs> Like all these shitty games. Where's he had the Sega Genesis? Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, like I don't, I don't understand that. It's like you want to see what the gameplay is, but it just, it's just a screenshot of Jurassic Park. But for that, that was the the Sega CD version. It was just like a point and click game. So obviously, you're not gonna want to show how shitty the game looked. It was I a really saw, awful game. Yeah. I saw the whole game playthrough of the game. The gaming beaver. <laughs> Game genies. Those are just, those are just magical. Let's look at the Sega CD once to see how much they wanted for that thing. And that didn't include the Sega Genesis either. You had to buy that separately. Sega offers a whole new dimension in video games. Used with Sega Genesis, sold on facing page. 500 megabytes of disk capacity with 6 megabytes of RAM. Like any kid knows what the hell any of that shit was. Custom graphics and sound chips provide better graphics with revved up hi-fi sound. Plays CD games, music CDs, and new CDGs with audio file quality. Plus lots of software packed in, including Sherlock Holmes, Consulting Detective, Sega Classics Arcade Collection Disc, Soul Feast. What the fuck is that? Two music discs and more. $229.99. Holy shit. You could get a Super Nintendo and not have to get all these fucking add-ons. Plus if you didn't have the Sega Genesis, you'd have to buy it on this page. And how much is the fucking Genesis yet? Sega Genesis Sonic 2 system. $129, holy fuck. That's just, that's ridiculous. And it wasn't even like that great. This is, he had the Sega Game Gear. How much was that? $129, that's the same as the fucking Genesis! Another Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what the game looks like. That, that, that's a shame because the Jurassic Park Genesis version was my favorite version out of all the, out of all the Jurassic Park games. No, I like that game. They couldn't even show a, a screenshot from the gameplay or anything. Maybe the game wasn't out at that point, but it was gonna be ready by Christmas. Street Fighter 2 on Sega Genesis, 75 bucks. That game's worth it, definitely. Then you got True to Life gameplay with Tiger Games. And they were smart not to put descriptions of these either, because they knew they were pieces of shit. 2XL! Dude, I like 2XL. When I was a kid, I always wanted 2XL until I found out it just kind of read you, like, tapes. And then the magic was gone after that, so it's like, you know, Santa Claus would have brought it, money would have gotten wasted, and it's just like, it would have just, 2XL would have sat in a corner somewhere just collecting dust after a while. Forever doomed to go into, you know, old toy obscurity. 
Uh, here's some more boy toys on this page. You got the, the the last action hero Arnold. We still got that at Grandma's house. Yeah. He he still says all of his four phrases. Piece of cake. What is this? Is this from King Kong? Uh, Skull Mountain playset. I don't know what Skull Mountain. Was. Mighty Max. I just watched some episodes of Mighty Max the other day. I really missed that cartoon. Skull Mountain was pretty cool. You had Max and the main character and then Virgil the chicken, or the the fowl or whatever. And you had Norman, the big Viking guy that protected those guys. The RoboCop, who's on my shelf up there yet. Dude, he was one of the coolest toys that Christmas. I'm glad I got him. Like the, His mouth was like a tiger game. It was just like a static image on like a background. <clears throat> with like when he says shit. $20, that's not a bad price for RoboCop. Tall with light and sound effects. 12 inches tall with light and sound effects. An interchangeable weapon arm. Well, and it's an accurate description, I guess. You got your Transformers. Of course, this is Connor's page. You got your Jurassic Park shit. From Turtles to T-Rex. From Turtles to T-Rex, yeah. They got all the Ninja Turtles. This is around the time when Turtles was kind of losing their luster. They got all the toys are, like, just weird things. Like, you had Turtle Transformers and Turtles that flipped. And, yeah, the Rock'em Sock'em robot set. Like, they were really reaching for ways to get kids back into the Ninja Turtles with these toys. Here's my favorite, Star Trek The Next Generation. You, of course, you got your Enterprise. I had that. I got that for Christmas one year, the, the classic Star Trek set. Well, now you have it in, in your room. Did it room. have a seat like that? Yeah, it did, but I, I, I ended up wrecking the cardboard display that it came with. Of course, that's cool. We still got that over there, the yeah. Jurassic Park compound. That says all that weird shit with that guy talking. You can tell the toy was like rushed out. Velociraptor attacking. <sighs> the, dude, the, the guy makes the dinosaur sounds on that thing, which is really, really strange. <laughs> the Lophosaur, T Rex. The, the, the raptor's like, eh. Yeah. yeah this is really strange. Explorer under attack. <laughs> Check Read the description. This thing was fifty dollars new. Dude, it was well worth it then. Fifty bucks for that. Main building with dino damages, three levels including catwalk, a crow's nest, a computer with over a hundred messages at a push push of the buttons. What's a crow's nest? Uh, I'm assuming it's like, uh, I think it's this, that like rim, you know, I, I'm assuming it's that, I don't, I don't know. A hundred, a hundred messages at the push of, a push of the buttons, there's three buttons and there's like, what, there's only like ten messages, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't, it just repeats them in a different way, like there's not over a hundred messages, that's bullshit. A net launcher, a tranquilizer, projectile launcher included, and it's made in the USA. Sadly, I'm missing those. Kenner was making America great again with these toys. And of course you got your generic dinosaurs for kids that couldn't get the Jurassic Park ones. Or the dinosaur mask you know, like that. One. See those were cool. Like back when I was a kid we'd see these for Halloween and stuff. It's like the mask the mask looked amazing for the time period. You wouldn't like when I was a kid you really didn't see like really detailed masks that looked like that. Like not like nowadays. Like nowadays you got the inflatable dinosaur suits that look really I wanna yeah, those look cool, but the rest of it just looks like some shitty rain poncho. He got like a your raptor head or the officer head. Yeah, and it's just some some shitty rain poncho you're wearing to for the rest of the suit. It just looks awful. Of course, here's your board games. Magic like rocks. Mix, yeah, the magic rocks or something. Magic rocks were always something I really wanted, but I just knew it would just end up in a junk pile somewhere because they were cool. They looked awesome. I, with my toys around it for a little bit maybe and then just shove them aside. I mean they're cool, there's like these little crystals that come up. I don't really know how you grow them or anything. Yeah, no Trump the board game in this one. I guess he, you know, lost his popularity around this time. He period. lost his luster. Yeah, he lost his luster. He didn't make Christmas great again at this point. More Jurassic Park shit, Jurassic Park model kits. I, I want those. Yeah, you, you want those. It'd, it'd be... So fucking hard to find these nowadays, but yeah, I'd like to build a dinosaur. These are neat. I like the Dilophosaurus one. The it's Lophos not in the book though. Yeah, I, I like building model kits. I'd build a dinosaur. And of course, just like your your other one, you got all your like old style TVs, wood televisions, overpriced videotape camcorders. 
entertainment centers, huge blocky phones. Dude, that Enterprise phone, I wanted that when I was a kid, even though I knew I wasn't going to use it. It's a phone. And I now look at nowadays, like, they, they're not worth anything. All of them ended up in junk piles if anyone still has phones around, just to keep as, like, collector's items. But, yeah, it's it's so weird looking at how, how, how far uh, we've come. That was always cool. The 57 Chevy cassette player, even if it was just a radio. They should re-release that. So we can have it, uh, you know, as a as a phone dock, so we can listen to music through it. That'd be so cool. I don't see that happening though. But yeah. Anyway, that's the 1993 Sears Holiday Wish Book. Well, that concludes this part of the video. Just a, just another nostalgic thing I wanted to look at that I didn't cover in my other Christmas specials of the past. It's a time honored tradition of going over to Grandma's house and circling the stuff you wanted in these holiday wish books. And they're really awesome to look at even nowadays. Just to just to take a big walk into the past, if you have any of these. Like I said, they're collector's items, so I've, I paid a pretty penny for these two just to film this special of them. But Yeah. Anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, you, you guys have a great night and a Merry Christmas, and hopefully uh, I, I brought you back some holiday memories from the old days. That, uh, you know, lit up the feels, you know, lit up the, you know, pulled on the nostalgia heartstrings. But, uh, hey. I'm Glenn Lentz, this is Connor Lentz, and I'll see you guys next time. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, everybody.